Welcome YouTube to another video on Atlanta to Dallas Aviation. Uh, today we have unboxing number 15. Um, so I actually, what I'm unboxing today, I actually purposely did not uh, pre-order anything from the Gemini Jets June releases. Uh, because I figured they were going to be available uh, at the Airliners International in DFW. Uh, and I did see several of these at the show, but did I buy any of them? No, I didn't. So uh, I ended up uh, purchasing them online um, with my... 15% discount. It wasn't just my 15% discount, but as a member of Collectible Jets, um, we get a uh, promotional discount sent out um, just about every time there's pre-orders or anytime there's um, like a holiday. So this was a holiday um, discount of some sort. Oh, it was for it. Uh, it was for uh, Prime Day, but it, I didn't get them through Prime uh, through um, Amazon. Uh, but uh, uh, Darius, uh, yeah, Darius is his name, um, had put out a fifteen percent discount um, code uh, celebrating Prime Days. So uh, I took that and ordered. Uh, these models that I did not pick up at the show. Uh, so with that little backstory, uh, we will go ahead and get started on this. Uh, so the first one I'm going to do is this one. This Contour Airlines Embraer ERJ-145. Um, the, let's see, item number right there as you can see uh, Golf Juliet Victor Tango Echo 2188 uh, this one's registration is November 12552 and the funny thing is um, I actually have this exact registration on this exact aircraft already now I'm not going to show you the model but I am going to show you the box because it was previously a Continental Express uh, ERJ-145, uh, obviously in Continental Express colors, uh, operated by ExpressJet. So that's that's kind of interesting because as I was as I was adding this to my spreadsheet, I noticed uh, when I was putting in the registration that the registration tried to auto populate, and I was like, oh. Well, that's weird because I know I don't have two of these. Um, so I looked it up and sure enough, uh, I had that other model. So anyway, and so you have the usual Gemini Jet box. So I'm not going to do that, but I am going to do this. So if you want to pause and if you can even read it, um, you're welcome to do that. Now, I already took my models out of the box. Um, and out of the plastic just to save some time. So here we go. Oh, he doesn't want to sit on his box very well. Let's let's put it on a different box. This box will be better, I think. All right. So just ignore that. That says Delta on it. Let's get nice and close here, as close as we can. All right, stop focusing in on my airport and focus on the model, you dum dum. All right, well, he is. All right, maybe that'll help. Ah, there we go. All right. All right, we'll do our 360 here. Nice ERJ 
145 in contour which uh, operates similar to uh, JSX. I'm not going to go into how uh, that happens but uh, so the pilots for um, contour and like JSX they don't um, a they don't require the minimum uh, amount for the usual uh, part 121 uh, operators um, there's there's kind of a loophole that um, these companies use to be able to uh, not have a pilot shortage if you will um, I believe part of that loophole also is that uh, pilots who have to retire from uh, the big boys uh, can come back and fly like uh, private jets and things like that um, if I understand correctly so here's our almost done with the 360 here so that's how Contour and JSX uh, works how they work work it out all right now we'll do our close-up sorry if there's some glare here um, some eh, maybe it's just the angle I was looking at but anyway so here we go uh, nose um, the very indistinct detail on the uh, uh, nose wheel or no nose gear um, the cockpit windows look pretty good but I noticed on the 360 that it seemed a little crooked or or the model sits crooked but I I think it was actually the the cockpit windows were uh, crooked uh, L1 door um, big billboard contour there and we just go right on down to the back over uh, over wing exit or actually I think the other door is not uh, there is over wing exit sorry uh, it's very small and I can't see it in person or on the screen so We got some writing there on the engine. Probably says contour.com or something like that on there. And then the very interesting, I think they have an interesting logo. I like their logo. Logo. It's colorful and then of course there's a plane right there. Uh, the white part there is a plane. Let's see if I can get up. Oh, nope, it didn't like that, sorry. All right, so that's as close as we're getting. So that's as good a shot as we're going to get of the tail there, of their in their logo. All right, so spent a little bit too much time. All right, so moving on, uh, since I have this box already out, we'll do this one next, even though I wasn't planning to. So we have the Gemini Jets. Uh, Delta Boeing 737-900ER uh, in the I never can remember if it's upward and onward or if it's onward and upward um, but anyway uh, that's what the livery is called um, the item number right there Golf Juliet Delta Alpha Lima 2102 In the registration, here we go. Uh, registration is November 856 Delta November. And there's the inside flap if you wish to pause and read any of that. I think I've got the whole thing in frame. All right. So let's bring that model in. It's not too bad a model. Uh, it's still um, 
it's still not great, but um, it's, it's hard to be NG. I, it, let's just put it that way. And But I will say the 900 um, is not, not as bad as the 700 at least. Um, I don't really have an opinion on the 800. Um, but I feel like the 700s the the least good of the seven eight and nine So here we do our 360 get a little bit closer here Hopefully I'll keep it all in frame during the whole 360 here Looking pretty good. Uh, the cockpit windows, uh, if they're not, they're either not quite even or it's just the way it's sitting on the box. I'm not sure, but it doesn't look as bad as the uh, ERJ did. So, uh, cockpit windows are pretty good on that one. I kind of wish Delta did the billboard titles and maybe and maybe like put the their widget uh, in the space in be, uh, in between the L1 or R1 and cockpit windows. I think that would be would have been kind of cool and you could actually read Delta on it. <laughs> And there's the split scimitars. Looking pretty good. I'm glad I picked this up. I The big thing that I collect is basically Delta in uh, Southwest. And the funny thing is, before I worked for Southwest, I hardly collected it at all, so uh, I had to play some catch up. Uh, once I got employed by Southwest via the uh, buyout of Airtran, I don't really call it a merger. They bought us out. There, um, I mean, I guess there has to be some sort of agreement. You can't just buy someone out, but uh, I. I think it was basically a buyout, but um, I couldn't have asked for a better airline to have buy the airline I was working for because oftentimes when mergers happen, a lot of people from the uh, airline being acquired uh, find themselves jobless, so uh, that was really nice, and it was nice that... Uh, Gary Kelly at the time put it out there, said, uh, if you stay at the job you're doing, uh, you're guaranteed a job at Southwest. So it was nice to have uh, that off the plate going into the merger. There you go. Alright, so let's get a, a look at this. Um, I, a pretty well shaped nose. Uh, I kind of looked at it from the top. I probably won't do that on the video, but kind of looked at it from the top. Um, I can't remember who was talking about it, but um, another YouTuber was talking about the shape of the nose and how kind of this side part on both sides kind of goes flat a little bit. Uh, and it this looks like uh, they did a pretty good job with uh, the nose on here. Um, so And maybe that's just because it's a 900 mold and not one of the other ones. Um, the nose gear looks pretty pretty good. The nose gear door might be a tad too big, but I feel like uh, 
Jim and I on the 800s and 900s uh, do a better job on the nose gear uh, doors than they do on the 700. And you got the Delta titles there above the uh, passenger window line. Moving on back, uh, Wi-Fi dome there, um, antenna uh, right there in the middle, CFM 56 engines, split scimitars, An another, another Wi-Fi box I believe. And then uh, another antenna there before we go into the vertical stabilizer. And that does not look like it's in focus to me. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's see if we can get that to fix. No, that still doesn't look focused to me. I don't know what it's focused on. It's not focused on the background, that's for sure. Maybe it's focused on that? Eh, okay, that's a little better. All right, yeah. I mean, I still can't really read the registration, but uh, it definitely looks clear on my screen. And so does the white uh, the uh, fleet number there on top of the tail. And then we're back in the back with the APU and horizontal stabilizers. So that's it for the Delta 737-900ER. We'll just keep this. Well, actually, I don't need to keep this box out. All right, so next up... Next up, we've got this beauty. Yet another Hawaiian Airlines Boeing 717. However, it's not really Boeing other than Boeing bought the right to it when they bought McDonnell Douglas. This is actually uh, the MD-95. And so this box, it's a little bit, little bit different. Um, it's sort of like the Southwest box, except the Southwest box doesn't have the flap on it, but it's also white. But anyway, so here's the item number. This is uh, Golf Juliet Hotel Alpha Lima 2183. The inside flap here. You can pause that if you want to read some of that. Uh, this aircraft's registration is November 491 Hotel Alpha. And I, I don't remember. I've got... I, I, this, I think this is my fourth Hawaiian 717. Um, and they're all different registrations. And one of them's even the older version of this livery that doesn't have the lay uh the that silver lay across the fuselage uh and that one was a dragon wings but they all have different reg numbers so i have four for sure four um of these now i have more uh airtran ones than any but my airtran one uh, I have three special liveries, and then I have um, the regular, the last livery they had. I have a regular livery, and but it's all the same reg number. So I, I bought a whole bunch of those uh, when we were getting bought out because I knew it was going to be far and few between uh, for Jim and I to put out any more AirTran uh, 717s. So, um, I bought, gosh, I don't know, I got four or five of them, actually. All right. I think this will do. Do our 360 here. Sorry, I'm going to move a little bit faster uh, through this. 
uh, because I still got one more to do and I definitely don't want this to be a part one and part two. Yeah, this must be how just how it how it's sitting. Because that even looks a little bit crooked on the cockpit windows, but I think that might just be how it's sitting on the box. And I should have turned this box over to do this 360. Anyway, such a a really I love the Hawaiian livery. Especially on the tail. I'm not super excited about that silver lay across the fuselage, but um, I love how they kind of updated um, the, I don't even know, the girl has a name, but I don't remember what it is, and I probably couldn't pronounce it even if I did. Um, and I don't know if she's necessarily a hula girl or if she's just a regular old uh, Hawaiian native type girl <laughs> um, but anyway but they updated the flowers and stuff a little bit uh, in that part of the livery um, like in 2015 or so and also I think that uh, all the planes have names um, and I believe this one was a really long name so again I'm not gonna try to pronounce it because I would truly butcher it <laughs> dang it got greedy there there we go all right so uh, you got the nice um, 717 nose um, cockpit windows with with the eyebrow window L1 door, um, some, I'm not sure what that says next to the L1 door. Hawaiian titles, nice and big like Delta should do. Uh, and then we start into the, oh well actually the lay starts actually right above the W if you can see that. And then it crisscrosses uh, throughout the fuselage until it turns uh, into color back here uh, near the back. There's our beautiful Hawaiian girl with the, uh, I, I think that's a hibiscus, but I'm probably wrong, uh, but flower in her hair. So that looks great. All right, so let's move on to the last one. And the last one is Atlas Air 767-300ER, passenger version. All right. Uh, in this one's item number right there, uh, Golf Juliet, Golf Tango India, 2166. Yeah, here's the inside flap. And this one's registration is November 649er, Golf Tango. And let's go ahead and bring this in. Um, I will have to say I am going to have to repair mine. Um, it came with... Uh, well, I got it stuck in there pretty good now. But the vertical stabilizer was loose. Um, I, I, I reserve saying it was broken uh, if, if parts are actually... Um, are actually broken and not just separated uh, but so the vertical stabilizer I got was separated um, and I'm sure that that was a manufacturer thing and not a retailer because the retailer packed it really well in the box that all of these came in uh, was in good shape when I received it so even if it got thrown around some it didn't get 
thrown around so bad that it got that obviously abused uh, so but the paint was not chipped either on the vertical stabilizer itself or on the uh, fuselage around it so I am just going to keep this and glue that back into place and so here's our 360 I think I have uh, I think I have um, Atlas Air 747-8 freighter I think that's what I have and I think it's interactive so I, I believe this is only my second uh, Atlas Air and I did want to have a passenger version uh, version of Atlas Air since they do do some charters I uh, believe they're mostly government charters or military charters. But this is a very nice, uh, I don't know, I, I really love Atlas holding up the globe. I, I think that's kind of a neat um, livery. In the 767 300, it'd be nice to have an updated mold from someone, um, but this one is pretty good. Um, and I think Phoenix even has a pretty good one, although I am not particularly worried unless the mold just looks horrible. Um, so I'm not really. Um, I hardly ever scrutinize molds. But I will point out quality uh, control problems. So probably that vertical stabilizer was probably a QC problem. So I pointed it out. But I'm going to fix it since it didn't seem to hurt any other, uh, the paint or anything. So, alright, so here we have the nose, pretty well shaped nose. Um, the cockpit windows seem to be on straight. Um, got the nose gear there uh, looking pretty good. Uh, Atlas Air, nice big bold letters across the fuselage there in their colors, uh, blue and kind of yellowy or gold if you will, a yellowy gold. I can't remember, uh, I think the engines on 767 are general electric engines but I don't know like I don't know what the engine number is or anything like that but I believe they're general electric and I think they're general electric on all of them so this one's an updated with um, with winglets and moving back to the back here American flag next to the door and on the other side of the door the registration and then on the pretty tall tail uh, you got Atlas holding up the world so very nice well that just about does it um, I have 30 minutes and I have like 45 seconds left uh, if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe um, and until the next video, um, happy collecting.